Uh, Robert Fox there, Simon, is saying there are now question marks. Of course there are uh, around Malaysia Airlines. What do you think? Well, I, I think the actual commercial future of Malays Malaysian Airlines looks extremely bleak, even if, as I suspect, uh, these two events turn out not to be connected. What we have uh, is uh, one inexplicable, unexplained tragedy involving MH370 on the 8th of March, and then today's awful news where, most plainly, there has been some catastrophic destruction of that aircraft, which may possibly have been a bomb on board. Uh, looks increasingly likely as though it might have been sophisticated weaponry. Um, and uh, the, the evidence from previous tragedies is that uh, if, two, if an airline has two uh, events in quick succession, that, that is uh, um, generally very bad news commercially. Just going back to uh, uh, the people who could have been on board, um, this was a flight, obviously, for, from uh, Holland to Malaysia. There will have been a large number of Dutch people perhaps going off on holiday, a certain number of Malaysians, but it was also used for connections. So I, I believe there may have been, sadly, a small number of British people who would have flown in this morning um, from various regional centres around the UK, probably not from London, uh, to Amsterdam to connect with MH17. And there will also have been a number of uh, Australian passengers on board because um, it, it was a popular route to get to Australia via uh, Kuala Lumpur onwards to uh, Sydney and Melbourne. But uh, terrible, terrible news for all concerned today. Simon, as you mentioned there, Amsterdam very much an international air hub, but in terms of international passengers on board, 23 US citizens are reported to have been amongst the almost 300 uh, who were aboard uh, the flight. It does make you wonder, though, why airliners, and we were discussing this just a moment ago, why airliners were still flying over that part of the world, given what was going on on the ground. Look, right now there are aircraft flying over conflict zones, but they tend to be places such as Libya, Afghanistan, Iraq, where the war on the ground is being fought out using fairly primitive weapons. And the idea has always been that if you're um, six or seven miles up, you are immune to the sorts of weapons they could have, predominantly shoulder-launched missiles, and therefore um, that there, that there has always been um, a certain amount of very high altitude flying over, over conflict zones because it was never felt that we would be in a position where a localised conflict could have such sophisticated weaponry which could only come from a, a major world power. Um, clearly, something has gone terribly wrong in Ukraine. And it's interesting to note, you mentioned the Americans on board there. Uh, the American FAA, Federal Aviation Administration, issued recently a warning to airmen, uh, NOTAM as it's called, saying ex exercise extreme caution over Ukraine. Um, but uh, up until today, of course, European Asian airlines have been routinely flying over Ukraine. Um, it's one of the main routes uh, uh, to, between the, the two continents.